Nobody told me adulting is hard. Hi, what's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Damaris Mikhali and this is My Shit Talkies. Today we share our experiences of the things we are learning in our 20s. I brought two people to share their experiences and I hope that you will learn. I hope that you will enjoy this video and as always remember to subscribe. Watch till the very end to get to hear what I have to say. Hi guys, my name is Masi Chibet and welcome to my short chapters. Today I get to share with you about the things I have learned in my 20s and the number one thing that comes to my mind most is self-care, um, self-identity, knowing truly who you are and what you stand for, your belief, your belief system as well. Um, this is something that really came in handy or rather I learned it at not the prime stages but at the later stages of 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 my of my 20s and it costed me i have to say that um the reason being is that i let myself be conditioned a lot by so many beliefs of other people i mean it didn't really concern me but just because they thought of me as that person is what made me alive or rather be that person at the time which i lived a lie and it later caused me my mental health uh, and so it is important to be authentic it's important to be who you are appreciate yourself as being you and what you stand for and your beliefs as, as well you had that be true to yourself because in your 20s there's a lot of noise going on do this don't do that try this you only live once you know and everyone has an opinion of what you should do or what they think is best for you and it is easy to get lost in the process to get carried away but when you stick to your true self that's what matters be your true self because at the end of the day it will always come out let's hear what another person had to say hi my name is Maureen Gilmo and today I'd like to talk about the biggest lessons that I've learned in my 20s. I am still in my 20s but I'm still learning. But first of all, uh, there are these lessons that have formed the basis as I advance in life and I think for me the biggest lesson so far has been that I am my biggest enemy. Why do I say enemy? I say enemy because in my early 20s, I found out that most of the time I would be a self-destructor when I wanted to try out new things, when I wanted to go to places, when I wanted to test new food and anything that I really wanted to do that was outside of my comfort zone. So what do I mean when I say that I am my biggest self-destructor? Take this example. There's an opportunity in class for me to answer a question but then the first thing that comes to my mind is do i have the correct words do i have enough vocabulary for me to voice my idea but that should not be the biggest uh, concern for me at that point in fact at that point i should be concerned about passing my idea and for people to fill in their own vocabularies but you see it's these little things that we do that hold us back that moment you pause and you don't uh, give out your idea you don't give out the best from uh, your best action you are holding back your true self from achieving your greatest and that is what i mean by being a self-destructor the other bit is also focusing on the negatives something has happened something didn't go as planned i was planning okay i applied for a job the first time I didn't get it, the second time I did not get it, the third time I did not get it. But now I start sitting down and telling myself, I am not the best here. I should not do this or maybe I need to work more on this and that and that and that. But what happens to my best points? What happens to my strengths? Am I affirming myself every day? Am I working on my strengths to make sure that I am excelling or I am just 
throwing a pity party in my house or in my mother's house or my father's house and just you know standing in front of the mirror and telling myself I don't like this I cannot do this because it's you know I do not have these qualities oh and the other common one is about our body features so you look at yourself and you say I hate my legs they don't look beautiful but who defined beautiful who says this leg is ugly that leg is beautiful or you know you, you want you start wanting to look like other people when you don't appreciate the ones that you have i think the leg example is something that i, I used to hate my legs so much until my father asked me young lady you never wear skirts why and i told my dad i hate how my legs look like but look at me now today i love wearing skirts because in my head, my legs are good and I don't care what the rest of the world thinks. The other lesson is about being bold. Being bold in the sense of taking charge and getting whatever you have conceived in your head that you want to do. I'll give an example. When I finished my high school, I did French back in high school. I told my father that I wanted to do French classes and my father was like, are you sure? Because at that point, most of our parents, or all of us, we usually put so much emphasis in education in the sense that we want to go to school, do something, and then in future, whatever we learned will benefit us economically and financially. So when I said I want to do French, my father was like, no, I, I, I don't think you want to be a French teacher. But then in my head, I was like, no, it's the skills that I want. At this point, I feel like I need French skills. I did not know what I would do with those skills, but in my head, I told myself, at some point in future, they might come in handy. And guess what? They did come in handy. So when I was looking for my job, I was asked if I have any other extra qualifications. And at that point, they were looking for someone who had an extra language. So I went home, I told my dad, guess what? Today, your French classes are paid. And I'm glad he agreed to let me do the French classes because I was bold enough to stand for my decisions. The other thing that has stuck with me is actually a very short odd. An odd is some sort of a poem. So if you Google in the internet, you will find um, we have this odd. It's called Desiderata. It was written in 1952, if I'm not so wrong by a guy who's called Max. I can't pronounce the other name so well. But this odd, it is calming. It affirms that everybody's existence is as important as the next person's because everyone has a different purpose. In fact, it picks trees and people. There's a reason why we have trees at a particular point and people here on earth. I'm sure you know that there's this thing that people ask themselves it's actually a pun is it that the trees are farming us so that they can eat us because you know trees take in carbon dioxide and then they give out oxygen so for us humans we take in oxygen give out carbon dioxide but when we die what happens we go back to dust and it's the dust that makes sure that the trees grows so you see that circle so it's usually a pun but the desiderata is something that I look up to most of the times when I feel I'm getting lost, when I start, you know, having questions about things, why things happen, why should I not give my best. Anytime I start having those self-doubts, I read the desiderata because it is one of those things that inspire or they just give you that calming effect. I can't add anything more. It is in your 20s that you'll have to make decisions for yourself and you have to be bold and courageous while at it. So here's what I have to say. What I am learning and I am doing in my 20s is that I have to think futuristic. I have to think about my life, the skills I have, how do I develop them, the finances and everything just around me and I have to think about them in the future because we think we have time until we don't. And this is the time to have that conversation around money. How do you save? How do you budget for your expenses? How do you invest? How do you make money work for you? Another thing is to never stop learning. Even if it's in the books that you read. And for me, 
learning has so much more to deal with people sharing their experiences learning from people who have gone before us and accepting to be guided and to be taught and to be intentional about it you see when you learn from people who have experience in a particular field the thing is you're able to know what worked for them what didn't work for them what it is they wish they would have done differently and then so that you avoid making mistakes another thing never settle never settle it's not the time to be okay with things as they are constantly look out for opportunities to improve yourself to become better to do more and i know there may be so much stuff going on you're trying to apply for a job you're trying to open up a business and it's not doing well or it's it's not bringing anything forth so what i say is channel your energy to something that is more productive and fulfilling and in the opportune time everything will become beautiful and you will thank yourself for not having to give up and everything and i say my take is just don't do anything to gain something like is it against your principles or your morals like will you blame yourself for having to compromise so don't be unethical about it but then again never set up for it this one is common but i think we don't take it in the measure that it's supposed to be taken or maybe we don't pay attention to it and the thing is you have to trust the process you have to trust the process and be patient about it you know with our generation we want things to happen overnight and voila we are millionaires we are billionaires you know we're doing things eh? we are in the forbes list top 30 under 30 you know but it takes time and you have to be patient i've been in conversations with people that have gone before us people who are the best in their craft in their profession and in whatever they do and what comes up in the conversation is that you have to put in the work the time the sweat and be patient about it and watch things as they unfold so every time i've tried out something and it's not working out i have to constantly remind myself and i have to be patient dama you have to be patient if you want the fruits if you want everything that comes with it you have to be patient at this point you can clearly tell that adulting is hard Adulting is hard. Nobody prepares you for the responsibilities, for the bills, and everything that comes with it. Now is when I understand when our parents didn't buy us fancy gifts and didn't take us on expensive trips. I totally get them. Because when I was 21, 22, ah, that was it. Immediately I got my first contract. That was it. It automatically came, like I was paying my bills. There was a time I just sat down and I was reflecting and I was like, wait, my parents have never asked me if I've paid my bills, if I've paid my rent, if I have money for food. I was on my own. I was on my own clearly and that has been it. That has been it because you're an adult and everybody has the same struggles as you. Last but not least, you will lose friends and that's okay. It's sad. That you have to drift apart from your friends for people you do stuff with but you know in your 20s everybody is just about going about with their own business everyone is figuring out what's working for them and what's not and in the process you can drift apart because people have different goals different ambitions as you and you're not headed in the same direction so it's only fair that again some friendships will not stand the test of time. These are just some of the things that I am or we are learning in our 20s. If I could have put everything that we are learning in our 20s in this video, hmm, trust me, it would have been very long. So I hope you've learned a thing or two as always. You know how we do? You know how we do? Subscribe and let's do life together. Until next time, this is Maisha Chapter. Please share, comment, subscribe and like the videos shared through my chapters for this and more please subscribe so that you don't miss out on any other 
uploads coming your way soon. Thank you and adios.